Welcome everyone to our Management and Integration and Teaching Support System session for Offsite Ready, the project that delivers knowledge for change. My name is Katrina Jordan. I'm an architect and lecturer at the City of Glasgow College. And we are a project partner for the Offsite Ready project. This is our fourth training session of the series, delivered jointly with Construction Scotland Innovation Centre. We're delighted that you have joined us today for an insight into management and integration and an overview of our teaching support system. The content can and will equip educators and trainers in all areas of off-site construction. This flexible program is free and easy to use. This morning, we will start with management and integration, firstly with an overview of the subject, a presentation on productivity by Dr. Mila Duncheva with the opportunity for question and answer Finally, moving on to our teaching support package. Before we go any further, if you want to ask a question, click on the questions in the control panel. It should be located at the right hand side of your screen. Type, um, type your question and then press send. We'll answer as many of, our, of your questions as we can during our question and answer slots. The webinar will be recorded and the link will be put on our social network channels for you to watch again later. Finally, there will be some polls throughout the webinar, the webinar um, which we are keen for you to participate in. After the webinar, there will be an evaluation form. Please complete this as it helps us in providing you with future services. I would like to welcome our panellists today, Neil Sutherland, an architect um, and the founder of Macker, an off-site construction company based just outside Inverness. And uh, we're going to look at our first uh, management and integration video. So we're keen to find out which area that you educate or train in. So is it in the construction sector, built environment sector, or is it industry construction, industry design, or industry supply? After our productivity video, um, there will be a question and answer so, slot. So please remember to post any questions that you, uh, that you want answered during these, this time. So predominantly people are from the built environment education area and construction, education with industry construction coming a third. We'll now look at our management and integration overview video. Management and integration is the glue that ties all the previous stages together. In this phase, the off-site and on-site elements are combined up until construction completion and the building is prepared for handover to the client. The main difference between management for off-site projects compared to on-site construction is the need for different sequencing of trades. Instead of firstly building the foundation, then the superstructure and finally the finishing works, the superstructure and the foundations are constructed at the same time but in different locations, on-site and in the factory. This difference will depend on the level of enhancement on the amount of work carried out in the factory. If the project uses a timber panelized system, for example, the finishing trades typically represent 50% of the on-site labour. With volumetric or modular projects, including the internal finishes, appliances, fixed furniture and cladding, the percentage of work for on-site finishing trades is reduced. Their tasks also change as they need to stitch the modules together. Stitching includes, for example, filling in the gaps around the module's corners with cladding so that the building facade is uniform and continuous. Alongside the opportunity to reduce time on site, another benefit of off-site construction site management and integration emerges, health and safety. As more work is transferred to a factory environment, the need to work at heights on building sites is reduced. This is especially true in modular roof structures, which can also be built on site next to the superstructure and erected using cranes with minimum need for finishing on scaffolds at height. In addition, in the lifting operations of subassembly panelized and volumetric systems, mobile cranes can be used instead of tower cranes. Some subassemblies and open panels with suitable weights clearly labeled 
can be lifted and handled manually without the need for equipment. Another key advantage of off-site construction systems for project management can be achieving strict environmental sustainability criteria. Due to the high levels of standardization and control in the factory environment, critical passive energy saving measures can be achieved in the building fabric. These can include thermal resistance with precise insulation of all components and no gaps between insulation and other elements, and air tightness or airflow between the internal area and the outside for careful taping of all openings for services and precise windows and doors installation. Despite important benefits, management and integration of off-site construction systems with on-site process can be challenging. One of the clearest examples of this is the interface between the floor slab and the ground floor off-site construction system. The ground works and floor slab typically need to be constructed to stricter tolerances than with on-site construction. In the construction of the seven-story residential building in Yorka using cross-laminate timber, or COT for short, the floor slab had to be constructed within a few millimeters tolerance. Another main challenge is the precise coordination of the on-site activities with the off-site manufacturing schedule and logistics. In this way, the off-site and on-site activities need to be planned together. If done successfully, the challenge of effective program management and communication with the supply chain can enhance certainty of the final completion time for the project. 4D simulations, including the three dimensions of space, plus time added as a fourth dimension can be useful to construct and analyze the building virtually before a single piece of dirt is disrupted on site. Several tools part of the building information modeling suites can be used to create these simulations. One of the most typical tools used for this is Autodesk Navisworks, although there are other providers such as Trimble or independent developers. These often include tools for health and safety analysis as well as class detection and on-site real-time tracking of progress compared to the planned construction time. Indeed, in this direction lie the future opportunities for management and integration of off-site construction systems. With the development of technology, we anticipate we will see more augmented reality use for quality control during each construction stage. The same idea of a digital twin or a digital model representing the as-constructed building as accurately as possible can be used to store and communicate maintenance and replacement information for each building component. Just think about how much easier and quicker it will be to fix a faulty ventilation pipe or electric cable if there is an accurate digital model telling the tradesperson exactly where the services are located. Interestingly, construction models and virtual reality can be used during the lifetime of the building as tools to engage with the public and even spark interest in construction as a career. In summary, off-site construction management and integration is the most critical step of the building process in which all the previous stages from design to on-site placement culminate into a finished product ready to be handed over to the client. The main difference between on-site and off-site construction is the challenge of scheduling the on-site activities alongside the factory operations so that they are synchronized. In practice, this can be achieved through increased use of construction schedule simulations in four dimensions, the three dimensions of space plus time. In the future, we expect to see more use of technology in off-site construction project management, such as digital twins for quality control and augmented reality for building component maintenance and replacement, closing the whole life cycle loop. Congratulations, you have now completed all off-site ready videos and are ready with knowledge for change to disrupt the construction industry. Be sure to check our website for further learning resources and spread the word about the Offsite Ready project. Many thanks to the Construction Industry Training Board for funding the Offsite Ready project, and huge thanks to our academic colleagues and industry leaders who helped with the creation of the Offsite Ready learning contents. From Edinburgh Napier University, City of Glasgow College, the Construction Scotland Innovation Centre, the Ministry of Building and Education, Class of Your Own, and the Construction Wales Innovation Centre. I hope that gave you a good overview of management and integration.
Next, I would like to show you a video presentation from Dr. Mila Dancheva discussing productivity. But before that, we'll have a quick poll. What do you think is the biggest benefit of management and integration for off-site construction? Improvements in sustainability, including thermal resistance, application of aug augmented reality for maintenance, building information modelling that can be used to reflect the building life cycle. After our video on productivity, we'll have a question and answer slot, so please remember to post any questions you have for, the, for Neil. So, um, improvements in sustainability and the use of building information modelling to um, monitor the whole life cycle of a building project is the top two. Our video on productivity. Productivity management in off-site construction. Now, first off, we're going to start off with what is productivity. This is a recent buzzword, uh, but if you look at the theoretical definitions, you understand that productivity is really the ratio of the product's output to the product's input. Um, and productivity is very often associated with our quality of life. Uh, and of course, there's also the, the more cost-based productivity measure in terms of okay, how much input do you put in, in terms of cost, but then how much value do you add to then achieve a price to the client. And this is all often termed as gross, gross value add or GVA. So overall, Productivity is all about the ratio between outputs and inputs. And in this scenario, for example, if your inputs are lower than the outputs value, that is good. But in the opposite case, if you're putting in a lot of work, let's say in a factory, you've put in a lot of work um, to make uh, to make a lot of panels as well as as well as materials, and those have associated costs. But then something happened. Uh, you noticed, let's say, there was an error in the panel drawings, and so you have to redo the panels for that whole floor of the building. Then your usable output would actually be very low um, in terms of meter square of floor relative to your input in terms of labor hours, materials, and costs. And in this case. Um, your factory will perform poorly in terms of productivity. So for any further reading on the more technical sides of productivity measurement, I'd highly recommend the OECD productivity manual, which you can see just here. Okay, um, now that is quite a simplistic way to view productivity. There's nothing wrong with it, but to my mind, it's quite simplistic. And indeed, the OECD uh, themselves accept accept that and that's why they've created the better life index uh, this acknowledges that there's different variables which impact quality of life not only gdp and especially for these will vary from person to person so let's say here on on this on the right hand side um i can go in and i can associate what values are very important to me let's say housing is very important to me so it's the environment and life satisfaction. The rest, you know, I have different opinions about. And based on those inputs by me personally, I get a ranking in terms of in which country does the quality of life match up and maximize um, according to my variables. So now I don't think that off-site construction is any different to quality of life in this instance. Offsite construction is a very complicated subject. And you know, we often we often hear of you know offsite construction can have better better quality, can have um, can have reduced time, can increase energy efficiency. Those are all aspects or variables different to the pure material labor 
and cost input into into the product and that's why um basically this was the fundamental reason why i spent a number of years at the university of strathclyde supervised by fiona bradley at university of glasgow to develop an off-site timber systems multi-factor productivity index um, the overall aim you know looking into the future years and years ahead i would be to create a tool similar to this in which according to a project people can can select their priorities you know what's most important to me and then for their region uh, they can get an estimation of let's say volumetric steel with 85 percent of work completed in the factory would be quite suitable for me so these 11 variables are what what were identified as the most critical um, variables that influence off-site construction productivity. So keep keep this in mind. And I'm going to talk through you how I came I how I came to identify these variables, starting with off-site manufacturing productivity. Now I had the had the honor and the pleasure to go around the UK and mainland, mainland Europe to visit 10 off-site manufacturers who produce both panelized and volumetric systems. And here you see some, some examples of, of manufacturers who use different levels of automation in their processes. What was quite interesting about these different manufacturers was the large variety of building types here European volumetric manufacturer two and three in my anonymized study, you notice that for them, the single family housing market was so saturated that they excluded it from their business plans. And indeed, there was quite a lot of variety, especially you can see uh, buildings in healthcare, in offices, in, in, recre in recreation, um, as well as in remote locations and rooftop extensions. Here you can see some of the fantastic uh, buildings which were constructed by the sampled manufacturers. Now, it's also very important to consider the work completed in the factory within any productivity calculations to avoid the situation where you're comparing apples and oranges. So what we found was that for UK panelized manufacturers, the work completed in the factory was approximately 25%, which was exactly on point with literature on, on, on the topic. Now, interestingly, in mainland Europe, volumetric manufacturers completed approximately 55% of the work. They had the niche, they had um, they had the business model which was working at scale as a subcontractor only delivering the volumetric modules, whereas the UK volumetric manufacturers tend to have approximately 70% of the work completed in the factory. So that's a higher percentage. And so here you see um, a bubble chart comparing the labor productivity of the, the sampled off-site manufacturers. Uh, UK volumetric manufacturers volumetric manufacturers had a relatively low labor pro labor productivity uh, so all, all that shows is uh, really opportunities for growth whereas the eu volumetric manufacturers were really efficient they had a very high um, output per labor hour and they were approximately on par with panelized manufacturers in the uk so again that just shows the different maturity of our different markets. But what about construction or on-site activities? Um, so for this, I went I went on site um, uh, and did approximately 46 site visits, with many thanks to the industry partners involved in both these projects, uh, really, really huge thanks. Um, so these were both affordable housing projects uh, constructed for one the same client within one the same year with similar house types and similar number of units. So how did they perform? Well, in terms of comparative productivity. So overall, the open timber panel constructed project was delayed by 12 weeks, whereas the volumetric system was delayed by 52 weeks or approximately a full calendar year. This is a significant difference considering that volumetric construction is very often advertised as being the fastest system. Because the volumetric timber constructed project uh, had a much higher percentage of work completed in the factory, you'd expect the materials waste on site to be significantly lower just because of the different locations of the construction activities. Um, but actually, 
because of the need for rework on site, uh, which which ultimately was due to um, a, a bankruptcy in the supply chain. Both these projects had similar amount of materials manufactured per, per plot or 2.5 to 2.6 tons. The installation time in terms of achieving that wind and water tightness on site is very important for construction managers. So in this aspect, you know, the volumetric system definitely outperformed the open timber panel and by 40 times. So now I'm going to share with you different tips um, based on what, we, what we've spoken about. So first of all, choose your productivity measures very carefully, your units, your formulas, etc. And define your priorities. What's most important to you in this project? Is it achieving high quality? Is it reduced time because you're building a school and it needs to start in time for turn? Decide what, what your priorities are. It's really critical in off-site manufacturing construction to work very closely with the manufacturers as well as the supply chain and manage those procurement processes. Um, you should also plan the interface between the off-site and the on-site activities. Um, and that's mainly, especially the logistic stage, how a component is going to be delivered from the factory to the site um, can be a very critical uh, make or break consideration. You shouldn't take the benefits of off-site construction systems at face value. Um, indeed, you should always plan the installation and follow and trades in detail to make sure that you hit your own priorities and your own targets. And while during the construction, beware not only of materials waste, but also of other lean wastes. So this has been a very quick fly through of site construction productivity ma management. For some further reading, I can suggest my thesis, which was referenced all throughout this um, this video, who doesn't like to reference themselves, um, but you can find the links here, as well as a journal publication at the Association American Society of Civil Engineers, Construction Engineering and Management Journal. So happy reading. Uh, this has been a Knowledge for Change video brought to you by brought to you by CITB and Edinburgh Napier University. And be sure to, to look at our website for further Knowledge for Change materials. I was muted there. So um, basically what, what I was saying is thanks um, to Mila for the overview of productivity. And um, Mila mentions um, sort of defining priorities, you Neil, know, and she talks about quality of life as being important and how buildings and off-site construction can assist in that. Um, this is a focus at MACR. Um, and can you maybe tell us about how you have approached that through design, manufacture and occupancy? If you just unmute your the icon, the red icon, I think. What we can do is we can um, just move on and then we can come back to the question and answers um, afterwards. So if we want to move on to the next poll and then we'll look at um, the our interview with Neil and Dr. Mila Dincheva as well. What are the main differences between traditional um, construction and off-site construction in regards to management and integration? 
different sequencing of trades, different tasks of skilled workers, or reducing the need to work at height. Uh, straight after our video interview with um, Neil and Mila, we will have uh, another opportunity for question and answers, um, and hopefully you'll be able to hear us then. So coming in at different sequencing of, of trades um, being the kind of main difference, and I think that's right in, in what Mila said about um, the sub, sub, substructure and the superstructure being constructed at the same time, but in different locations. We will now watch our interview video. So welcome Neil, thanks, for, thanks so much for, for joining us today. Uh, this is Dr. Mila Duncheva from Edinburgh Napier University. I guess as an introduction, you, do you want to uh, introduce your, yourself a little bit and talk about Macker's approach to offsite construction? And I'm quite interested in your recent scalability of the business. Yeah, certainly, Mila, it's nice to join you also. Okay, well, my name is Neil Sutherland. I'm the founder and um, leader, I guess, of a company based in the Highlands called Macar. We have been in existence for about 18 years. Uh, we're based just on the edge of Inverness. We have around 45 employees at the moment. A bit more background on me. I'm, I actually combine an engineering mechanical production engineering uh, background. It was a very practical um, uh, start in my life. I was an apprentice engineer, and then I went on to study architecture. And uh, yeah, did something completely reckless, started a business immediately after finishing st studies, which I wouldn't necessarily recommend. But the offsite side of things, um, we got serious about that about 10 years ago. And that was probably off the back of a visit to mainly Switzerland and south of Germany, and we, we saw what was going on there, and, and we thought this was uh, pretty intriguing, really. Um, but there has been some consistent things about MACA right from the very get-go, so we've always been in response to the local renewable timber resource, for example. That's always been a huge driver and motivation for us. But to grow a business, you really need three main things. You need to be beyond the, the startups phase. So an established built business, you need to have quite a lot of demand for your product, a high demand, growing demand, and you need a good cash position or you need investment, or one of the two or both. And that's the position we're in at the moment with all three of these at, at Macker. So we're actually in a growth uh, situation at the moment. So we're, we're quite excited about the plans we're making. Uh, for, for some significant scalability in the years ahead. At the moment, we're, we're hitting about the 4 million turnover. In, in, within five years, we, we aim to, to multiply that by a factor of 10. What kind of offsite systems do you use and what, what markets do you work in? Yeah, the, the market segment that we're particularly focused on just now is the custom built uh, segment, which is a relatively small but um, important housing, it's mainly housing, one-off houses that we, we're involved in. Mila. In the UK, that's, that market is relatively restricted, but it's also where the innovation is. It's where a lot of the, the um, technical progress has been made in terms of the performance of buildings, um, both energy, carbon performance, and um, accuracy and quality performance. So. Yeah, it's an area that we know very well, but having said that, in order to, to get to that scale that we anticipate, we're looking at opening up other, other market, market segments. So particularly working with um, other, other developers and housing associations and partnerships, uh, both in Scotland and further afield. Uh, so we're looking at the English market just now. And we've got some connections down there with with one or two of our investors. the The idea is that a lot of the relationships, uh, in terms of the physical relationships of how we make things, are standardised and repeated. We um, achieve continuous improvement uh, and kind of lean approaches 
um, but we have a lot of a certain amount of flexibility over what we actually make, so we can we we can we can make a, a lot of different things in that sense. We're we're moving, up, I suppose, more strongly into that uh, standardization. Most designers, architects are a bit concerned about standardization. Believe me, yeah, it it does offer a huge amount of advantage. One of the reasons that we that we work in the way we we work is because it gives us a lot more control over the whole process, uh, which includes our, our network of suppliers. Uh, we work very closely with our suppliers. Um, a lot of what we need to do, I believe the kind of more hopeful thing within the kind of progression in, in construction generally is, is cooperation and working very closely with, with others. I mean, if you, if you take the traditional building approach for housing, you know, apart from the fact in the UK, a lot of new houses are delivered by a completely different business model, which the volume builders are really interested in increasing the value of land. And um, the, the housing is almost like a secondary thing, which is why it's usually pretty poor, frankly. The architects are squeezed out of that process. They're not really involved in, in that at all. But yeah, I, I'm an advocate of architects changing their approach and, and, and being much more in a leadership role within the construction sector, because um, if we are serious about following through with our intentions, which is what design is effectively, mm. we, uh, it's not good enough to come up with good ideas. You have to, there's a two-stage process where you have to um, follow through with those ideas and get things delivered. So offsite is largely focused on execution. It's how to get things done in, in a quality manner in a manner which is representative and fully fulfills the aspirations of our time, which has to include uh, significant energy performance, carbon performance, and a responsibility to to the uh, to the supplier network. So, so circular circularity in economics is really very very important. I mean, what we're doing now you know, is is relevant to. Uh, how people are going to find the world in 50, 80, 100 years, you know. So when you consider the, the implications of the built environment and the, the, um, the, the implications, the opportunities, really, that we have to, to, to address some of the big issues of our time, we're only going to do that if we have a joined up, cooperative, uh, integrated process. The future for housing is definitely a, a manufacturer model. Uh, it's it's a model where we integrate the whole team uh, with the end in mind in business terms. And it's a very, very exciting place to be. One of the problems with traditional construction sector approach is, is low profitability, so it doesn't attract investment. Uh, it's, it's not very interesting or exciting in, in many respects, where I think we can say the opposite about the kind of work that we're doing. Uh, construction is fantastically exciting and interesting. You get a real thrill. I never, I never, I never miss that. You know, seeing buildings being assembled and 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 the joy that comes from actually building wonderful buildings and and the the, the benefit that gives to to people's lives is 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 tangible. You know, it's massive. And so we need to find a way to make that interesting for everyone. So we get the brightest and the best people involved. I know you're one of them, but we need more of these people, um, and let's get a movement going for um, around this whole approach, which which is is progressive and and future, and it's happening now. Frankly, you're cooperating with people from across the industry in Scotland uh, for Offsite Solutions Scotland. Um, could you tell us a little bit more about that and why it's important and what what the mission is? Sure. Okay. Well, the the Offsite Solutions Scotland is a, a network of roughly 10 companies um, from across the country, so from Caithness to the borders, a collection of small and large companies. Uh, innovation often happens with, uh, on the margins or at smaller companies. So in other sectors, uh, it's quite common for large companies and small companies to get together and actually discuss the future and how they can, how they can work together. I think it's it kind of reflects a certain maturity within the uh, manufacturer 
offsite kind of um, situation in Scotland that we can get ten companies that meet on a fairly regular basis and openly discuss how things are going. We can we can have joint approaches to things like market research and um, and research generally. It's a very positive scene and um, and it's going very well. Yeah, that, 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 that's really great. Um, yeah, so I think you're talking about, you know, how with Offside Solutions Scotland you discuss how things are going, but also how they're going to move into the future. Um, how how do you see that future, especially with the current circumstances that we're in uh, with, with this pandemic? How do you think we need to emerge from it? Yeah, that's that's a good question. What I should have said about Offside Solutions Scotland also is that we have close working relationships with Edinburgh and Napier University and also the Instruction Scotland Innovation Centre in, in terms of um, you know that guidance and, and coordinating role, which is really rather crucial as well. So that's important. I think that the priorities of individuals and society is, is likely to shift. And I think that's that, you know, sometimes we need these, these, these um, challenging times to figure out what's important and um, the, the health and wellness of ourselves and our communities and society generally is at the centre of that, really. Our overall health and well-being is hugely impacted by our, the environment in which we live, both the built environment, the managed environment, the, the, the natural environment. And um, I hope and trust that what's happened in the past week, while putting aside the, the clear kind of um, um, kind of very real difficulties that a lot of people have, have faced and, and will continue to for a while, uh, there will be some positive things emerge from this. So we our order book is full. Um, we are very fortunate in that we have enough work ahead of us for the next year. We're actually in a recruitment situation just now, but we're, we're emerging from this difficult situation in a, res a resilient manner. And um, yeah, uh, um, it's 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 very positive in that in that respect. What else can I can I say about that? Um, yeah, interested in in some of the kind of initiatives in in terms of economics, so the foundational economics, well-being economics, uh, circular economics, all of these things are closely associated with uh, a drive for better buildings for, for uh, and that's got to be an, an off-site future, frankly, an off-site manufacturer future. We've got to work closely with, uh, with education and education has got to work closely with us. So I think that symbiotic thing has got to happen. And um, I think we have a very bright future in Scotland in, in the next uh, 10 or so years. We have to drive this forward. Thanks, uh, Neil, so much for your interview with Neil. It covered a whole range of points. Um, I've just got a couple of questions. And if the, uh, the participants have questions, please post them uh, on the question panel. And sorry about our earlier technical issues. Um, so Neil, a point or a question that re rises regularly is offsite construction doesn't suit bespoke buildings, um, but your company specifically architect-led creating design and build projects um, which are bespoke. So um, how have you found have you found this a challenge? Um, or what advice would you give to people um, who think it's only suitable for maybe repetitive um, work or how? Okay. Can you hear me this time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah, I managed to find the correct uh, red button to click on. Yeah, firstly, um, hello everyone from uh, kind of uh, overcast uh, Inverness. It's um, <laughs> I'm sitting outside. You see the the satellite uh, just beside me here. Yeah, it's up there somewhere. Uh, that's right. <laughs> This is <laughs> so we don't have fantastic uh, connectivity up here, but it sometimes works. Yeah. So the the questions around um, how we get variety, um, and um, and we deal with this kind of standardisation. So yeah, I've um, <laughs> I've noticed this myself. A lot of architects are quite concerned about 
um, things being very dull and boring when, when they're the result of a an off-site process. Yeah. Uh, basically, that's a misconception. Uh, the the kind of term that we as a, the kind of general term is mass customization, I guess, where the concept really is that the you repeat the the relationships, the the, the things that go together in a consistent manner, but you can change the patterns. So the the one of the primary elements we produce are are, are quite complex um, panelized systems, so so sub assembly systems. So you're maybe only using um, 30 to 40 panels in, in a three bedroom house, for example. Um, and each one of those panels has got a lot of value attached to it by the time it's been it's been made to include insulation and windows and, and, and finishes and services and this type of thing. Um, so, so it's important that it all fits together. Um, what, what is maybe surprising to some people is that each one of those panels is the product of a similar process, but each mm -hmm. panel can be physically different uh, depending on what you're trying to achieve, really. Uh, so that gives you a kind of endless number of, of options, um, but you, you know before you've made the panel uh, what's involved in it in terms of its of, of the, the labor content uh, material content so you can accurately cost it so you can accurate accurately um, sell it in a commercial sense so so all of these things have to kind of line up effectively um, there's nothing worse than designers coming up with things that can't be built <laughs> that's another challenge that you need to try and avoid if, if at all possible we're looking at the buildability as well um, I just wanted to go back to a point that Mila had talked about in terms of quality of life through our productivity um, video, and um, she talked about how how important offsite construction is and and can assist in that. And a focus um, at Macker as well um, is quality of life and you approach that to your design, manufacture, and occupancy. Can you tell us a little bit about that as well? Yeah, sure. Uh I mean, often we think about health in our culture as an absence of illness. Uh, actually, in fact, um, health is is a more complicated thing than that. Uh, it's it's really our our ability to to perform in in all kinds of ways and, and to integrate with the world we live in. So um, we take this very seriously at all levels in, in the organisation. So um, and as I mentioned. I think in in the interview. So it's very odd watching yourself in an interview, by the way. But anyway, um, I should do a bit more smiling, perhaps. Anyway, the the um, what's what, what's important really is that um, that that we we take as much care as we can to to integrate with the natural world, mm -hmm. and and to, to to mimic that to to some extent. I mean, the we go to the extent of. Um, our, our specification in all our buildings is is what would be described as a, an ecological specification, um, or, or eco houses is the, sort of, the the general sort of um, way of describing that. Now, what's involved in that is is a combination of materials, particularly that um, don't damage the environment in, in relation to their processing and their eventual disposal. So. Um, the, the disposal in term in that sense is about anticipating their reuse into as food for the next process mm -hmm. as in the, the circular circular economy um, this is hugely important and um, what what's interesting with that is it links up um, some key things that we all rely on um, so the health of env our environment the health of, of our economy our ability to 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 have skilled jobs and high high paid jobs effectively is all part of this this whole kind of idea and then the eventual um, in our case as a business we're focused on 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 producing wonderful and inspiring uh, places for people to live um, when when you live in an inspired place which is healthy full of light is comfortable 
it makes a huge difference to, to people's lives. And, and that's really what we're focused on. Um, we're not just involved in single houses. We, we also were involved in designing larger um, settlements and this type of thing as well. Okay, excellent. Thank you so much. And um, we're going to have another opportunity later on for some more question and answer. So just remember to post your answer uh, questions on you. Um, we're now um, going to have a, a website overview focusing on our teaching support system. So this will assist you in utilising the off-site ready content. Um, but before that, a quick poll as well. So we just want to, hopefully you've um, been involved in all four um, webinars and which module do you think that you'll be most utilize, you'll most utilize the digital design, estimating commercial and logistics, off-site manufacturing, or on-site placement and assembly, or the management and integration modules. Just another reminder, post any questions on our question uh, chat box. So off-site manufacturing coming in is the will be the most used um, module, which is um, really interesting. Um, taking the lead there, nearly sixty percent. It's excellent. And now a video uh, overview of our website. I just want to go through the website with you, and. It's focus specifically on the teaching support system. Currently I'm at the home page of the website and if I go up to training materials, seven modules plus the teaching support system are highlighted below. If I click on fundamentals, off-site fundamentals, it gives me a synopsis overview with the module descriptor which I can download, the editable, editable slide deck, fundamentals booklet, which includes infographics, and then we have the overview video of fundamentals and below MetaSkills resources. This is all included, for, this would be all included for each module digital design, estimating commercial, logistics, off site manufacture, on site placement and assembly, management and integration. Similar content will be included. If I go on to the teaching support system, again we have a synopsis overview of the subject and we have learning materials down here. Teaching support booklet which I'll look at in a bit more detail, an overview video, so an example lecture and an example workshop that you could carry out. We also have an overview of how off-site off ready could be integrated into schools. A project partner, a class of your own, have created and been going to schools throughout the UK integrating off-site construction through the Off-Site Ready programme. If we go back up and I download the teaching support booklet, you can see here we have an introduction of the, what the booklet is. So it's, it's to support teachers, lecturers and trainers to implement content to their course delivery, covering the seven modules. And then modules are targeted pre predominantly at colleges and universities, but also we have class of your own who have adopted, for, have adopted content for school levels. The teaching support system, the project partners carried out a qualification qualifications mapping exercise, looking at courses across the UK and identifying where off-site construction could be integrated into the teaching and learning, and also where there was missing gaps and where the content could be utilised. So we have a range of courses and modules across being taught across the UK and the suggested on the right hand side where which modules could be utilised within the overview modules. 
So for example, residential design, fundamentals could be used here and digital design. So if you're teaching residential design, you would want to take the fundamentals and the digital design content and apply it to your teaching. We then go through and talk about what type of content is included. So we have the seven modules with module descriptors. Within each booklet, they're broken down into digital skills, information management and communication, procurement, tendering and contracts, health and safety, management and planning, factory operations and site operations. We have a range of different mediums for teaching and we call these our teaching outside of the box approach. And the table here shows you module descriptors and booklets, PowerPoints, slides and infographics, animations and talking head videos, a Udemy course which will include video overviews with quizzes throughout. These booklets can be downloaded and the content can be downloaded. We've also looked at industry and identifying which roles should uh, need to to be adapted and for the teaching and learning. So we have skilled worker, supervisor, manager, senior manager, professional, and you can look at what module would be used for which discipline. We also have suggested delivery methods. So a lecture, a suggested delivery lecture, with maybe a video overview and a lecture and a meta skills workshop. We have three suggested deliveries, introduction, medium and advanced. As you can see below, if we take introduction, a lecture, maybe an hour lecture with a site visit, plus a small design project, design feedback sessions and interactive workshop. And that could be taken for one particular area. There's also an example of how a new module could be created for, the, for your organisation and guidance on how to create it and suggested credits, teaching time, summative assessment and reading list, even a suggested title. And then below that there's a range of reading lists covering each module specific. We are really keen for you to utilise our content. But also, we, want, we have created this teaching support system to guide you and support you in your teaching and learning. Also, as a follow up to today, if there are any questions surrounding anything in regards to the content or the teaching support, please get in touch with us and I'll be happy to help and assist you. Thank you. Uh, before we move on to uh, question and answers, we've had a, a couple of questions from the participants. Um, I just want to say um, there's been some um, updates to our website. So our teaching support and within the teaching support system, the Are You Offsite Ready Student Challenge information is included there now that you can access. Uh, the project kicked off last week um, and it's a project between Napier University, City of Glasgow College students and they'll be working together over the summer um, on an off-site construction project. I have included the brief today within your handouts, your content handouts, and you can edit that brief to suit um, yourself if you were to teach a, a similar project. Um, if you go to the teaching support system, you'll find there are 10 videos of 10 minute presentations from the mentors that are involved in the project talking about a range of subjects from design considerations, mass timber to inclusive design, and there's also sketch up tutorials and, and many more. So please check them out. Um, also shortly, hopefully in the next week or so, going live will be our Udemy course. Um, this course takes you through the video content of each module. And along the way, there'll be questions on completion of, of the, all the modules you'll receive a badge of, badge of certification. Um, also within today's handouts you'll also receive a certificate of completion for the training ses sessions that you have participated in. So 
we just a couple of questions come in. Firstly, um, one's come in from Tom Neil, and I think this this um, is for you. Um, he's asking how important do you think the design for deconstruction is in terms of off-site construction? If you just unmute your microphone, Neil, sorry. What we'll do another question's come up um for myself. Um so same with all these um with all these resources, where's the best place to start um for me to use um with an, an existing course? So um, my answer to that is firstly identify um the existing course which module you think it would fit slot into. So if it's covering an area, say, for off-site construction, that's the, the module that you want to focus in. The best place to start is that for a general overview is the fundamentals area. But with each module, there's a, an infographic sheet, and you can find that under the, under the website. And that gives you a clear area, a clear identification of topics that are covered within um, the module. And it's, it's used graphics, and so you can say, okay, offsite construction is covering A, B, and C. This is the one for me, and I would start there, and then look at the slide deck, look at the video content, and you can, with the the slide deck, you can cut elements out if you think it's maybe going into too much detail or an area that's not maybe relevant um, for for the area that you're discussing um, that you're teaching in. So. First of all, looking at fundamentals, and then I would look at the infographics to give you a high-level overview, and then take take it from there, looking at the video content. The video content is excellent because it gives you just a 10-minute overview of each um, module. How are we getting on, Neil? Did you manage to unmute? Yeah, finally got there. <laughs> excellent. So yeah. uh, just back to Tom's question. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's a very good one, and I think... Um, it says a lot about the the whole kind of approach, uh, the the progressive approach when we actually think about deconstruction as well as construction, because the two things are 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 kind of very importantly connected. What we're trying to do is is avoid waste in the traditional sense. So waste is a concept, really. You know, it's a sort of resource in the wrong place or something, mm -hmm. and um, so really, we, we have to get away from this. this. This is one of the challenges that we have um, of our time, really. So yeah, as the, in a sense, one way to look at deconstruction is construction in reverse. But it's also to try and consider, um, you know, how how and what we use so that we anticipate um, uh, re re reemploying those materials. Um, in a way which, um, yeah, which is which is resources for the future, really. So, so we often think about that. So, you need to avoid certain complex relationships that um, that 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 will end up in in sort of destroying bits and pieces or or ugly components full of chemicals or, or this type of thing. One has to be careful with these things. But yeah, good, um, very important aspect of of what we do. And uh, in a sense, um, it shines a light on the responsibility uh, that we have to bring to the built environment uh, in our time and in the future. I think that's a great way of thinking of it, construction in reverse. <laughs> It'll stay with me. Um, so thanks very much. I think, um, thank you, Neil, for joining us this morning um, and a great insight into offsite construction and, and what you do. Um, we hope that the webinars have been inspiring and that you will adopt our, tra our training, teaching and learning. The sessions are not only aimed to introduce our project and the materials, but also to highlight the importance of addressing um, some key drivers that have been discussed over the past few weeks, like sustainability, digitisation, skills shortages, production and waste, improvement in building performance, to name a few. Thank you, everyone, for joining us in this journey. We hope that you've enjoyed it and thank you to Neil and to all our guest speakers who have given context to off-site construction. 
Thank you to CITB Construction Industry Training Board for funding the project and all our project partners that have made this journey so enjoyable. Please be in touch. I'm available for further discussion and to give you advice and guidance where needed. In the meantime, start utilising this content from our website, www.offsiteready.com, to access our teaching materials. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Neil. Bye.